there's no longer a divide between the virtual world and the real world for younger generations. They're one and the same. So whether that's augmented realities, virtual realities, or mixed realities. A lot of online harmful behavior will go unchecked. Just because a methodology worked online five years ago doesn't mean it'll work online today. VR is only one version of what extended reality can look like. The metaverse is an online environment and ecosystem where people from all the world can engage and interact with more virtualized versions of themselves. It may be overlaid on the physical world, it may be fully immersive online, but ultimately it allows for interaction and communication between massive audiences in online social spaces in a way that's much more interactive than current social media platforms. Previously disparate conspiracy narratives, previously disparate movements are now starting to fuse. There's multiple different trends going on um, simultaneously on, on an ideological lens. So the first thing we need to do is um, make sure that we're talking accurately about who the actual at-risk audience is. And it's not just young people, it's people across the board. We need to be targeting audiences on the basis of their interests and the basis of the reason that they're getting involved. There can be people who are getting involved with conspiracies or with extremism um, because of uh, underlying mental health vulnerabilities across all ages. We're finding that concerted disinformation campaigns are happening a lot more on social media platforms. It's much more difficult to find out where it's happening as a result. Most things are completely concealed behind memberships, logins. Essentially, they've been removed from the open source and more into private networks. The main PCV challenges online right now are content that are in languages that are not English, Chinese, German, French, really late behind. Secondly, decentralization of uh, communication approaches. Encrypted channels are huge. And thirdly, I think we're not hitting users where they're at right now. Lots of people are immersed in, in gaming environments. When we start to be using these virtual personalities in a way where we're interacting with each other in a much more realistic way, there's going to be huge steps in how we interact with each other and how we assimilate information. Recent events have definitely taught us that violent extremist organizations and terrorist organizations are frequently ahead of the curve when it comes to intelligently designed gamified approaches to get propaganda and violent content into the hands of millions. The Buffalo shooter incident, for example, showed us a continuation of live streaming fused on with gamified elements. We're going to have a very different threat ecosystem in the coming years. Everything that you see online on most platforms is actually targeted towards you. The same is true for streaming platforms, for social media platforms. As a result, people have very, very little control over the information that they are being fed through these algorithms. you're working with vulnerable people who are spending time online, you have to understand the environment in which they're operating. Whether it's policymakers or parents, not demonizing technology and taking the time to really understand the benefits um, is essential to keeping people safe. When we're talking about any emerging technology is understand where there are real threats and where it's just something that an older generation doesn't understand. Uh, we need to remember that there were congressional hearings into comic books in the 1950s that because comic books are ruining children. Chief Alvo, what have you learned in, so far in your investigation on the subject of comic books? And it is directly responsible for a substantial amount of juvenile delinquency and child crime. I think the key thing really is finding out where young people are most active and understanding how they are active on these platforms, what their behaviours are, what typical interactions look like. Because without understanding those as a first step, it's very difficult to establish how best to reach them. 
let's bring in some of the most brilliant thinkers from the tech space to have chats with practitioners as well. And I think drawing in some folks who like to call themselves futurists or technologists into this field would be great. And we ought to be trying to retool algorithms to promote better diverse conversations and not just stale dark rabbit holes. There's quite a few things that as practitioners we can do to stay on top of things. The first thing is actually just existing on these platforms, finding out how they work, what information is available on there, how people tend to interact. The next thing after this is knowledge sharing. Once we've seen this, once we've experienced this, we need to be sharing what we're finding. The other thing is just being aware that what you're being shown and how you're experiencing a platform isn't necessarily going to be how the people that you're trying to understand are experiencing the platform. Professionals that are working on radicalization should be looking out for opportunities um, as to how they can use new and emerging technologies to connect with people they never would have been able to connect with before. I think things we can do are, are flagging known sources of, of mis- and disinformation, particularly state-based actors, and for non-state armed groups or violent extremist groups, we ought to be either flagging that content if it is uh, particularly dangerous or violent, and if it's not, we ought to be flagging and clearly showing the source and giving better tools for understanding that content and that information, and better yet, telling people how to spot it and understand it. Social media, these platforms, the metaverse, they can all be used for good. It can be a great step for us, but other kinds of information sharing is just making sure that you know we're all aware of the risks. Far too often, um, PVE practitioners and CVE practitioners see new and emerging technologies solely through the lens of how extremists are using them, instead of seeing the opportunities that those technologies can present for intervention, for, for engagement, and for analysis. Can we foster digital empathy? Can we foster digital resilience by building broader communities? Absolutely. There is such potential there, and there's so much excitement there to also build more narratives and more stories that people want to engage with and want to feel uplifted by. Mm -hmm.